This video describes Quicksort, covering what it is and how it is implemented. Quicksort is a widely used, fast, in-place sorting algorithm. The initial form of the algorithm was devised by Tony Hoare in 1959 as a visiting student at Moscow State University. On his return to England, Hoare joined a computer manufacturer called Elliott Brothers, where he was asked by his boss to implement Shellsort. Hoare suggested that he knew of a newly devised algorithm that might be faster than Shellsort, which led to a wager with his boss, who bet that he didn't. Ultimately, his boss conceded that Hoare's Quicksort was faster, at least on the kind of data they tested on, leading Hoare to win the bet. After learning about recursion in Algol, Hoare published the Quicksort algorithm in 1961 in the communications of the ACM. Note that Quicksort is not a stable sort. It does not preserve the input order of identical keys. When sorting n data items, the average case complexity of Quicksort is big O of n log n. However, its worst case complexity is big O of n squared. Bad news. We require linear storage for the original container of n items to be sorted, and the storage overhead of quicksort itself is big O of log n in the average case, and linear in the worst case, which comes from the stack used in the recursive implementation. However, if you can rely on your programming language implementation having tail call optimization, the storage complexity remains logarithmic for the worst case. In practice, implementations of quicksort, which makes heavy use of linear scans, tend to be quite cache friendly, so it is often faster than other algorithms with similar average case complexity like heapsort. Quicksort is particularly widely used in hybrid algorithms like introsort, which starts out with quicksort, but falls back to heapsort to avoid the big O of n squared worst case behavior of quicksort. The quicksort algorithm adopts a recursive divide and conquer strategy that involves three steps. First, select a pivot from the current array to be sorted. Second, Partition the array into three subarrays, arranged such that they contain the elements less than or equal to the pivot, the pivot itself, and the elements greater than or equal to the pivot. Note that in this step, either the first or third subarrays can be empty. Third, we recursively call quicksort on the first and last subarrays. We can implement quicksort as a Python function that takes in an array together with the indices of the low end and high end of the subarray that remains to be sorted. If the low index remains below the high index, we call a partition helper function that selects a pivot and rearranges the elements according to step two. Then we recursively call quicksort, first on the left subarray and then on the right subarray. Let's see quicksort in action on this example array, which we duplicate for clarity. We call quicksort with low equal to index zero and high equal to index five so that they span the array we'd like to sort. Our helper function first checks if low is below high, which it is, so we call the partition helper function. This selects an element to be the pivot. In this example, we'll always take the pivot to be the last element in the subarray. The partition function then does some heavy lifting to rearrange the elements into the three subarrays of step two. Next, we call quicksort on the subarray to the left of the pivot with the same low index, a high index of pivot minus one. Here, we've duplicated the cells to show the recursion, but no copying is needed. Since low is still less than high, we call partition, which again selects the pivot as the last element in the subarray and performs step two, which involves no rearrangements. This time, we call quicksort with an empty left subarray and an empty right subarray. So nothing remains to be done, and we recurse up the stack and move back to our call to quicksort on the right subarray which we again duplicate to illustrate our current stack depth. Since low is less than high, we run the partition function to split into three subarrays and select the last element as pivot before performing step two. Calling quicksort on the empty left subarray exits immediately. So we recurse into the right subarray. We confirm that low is below high and call the partition function to perform step two. This time, the left subarray is empty and the right subarray is empty. And so, we are done. If we examine the numbers in each array place, we see that they have been sorted into ascending order. We'll now look a little deeper into the partition helper function, which does most of the work in quicksort. The first implementation we'll look at is often called the Lomuto partition function, after programmer Nico Lomuto. It takes in the array together with the low index and high index that bound the subarray to be considered. First, a pivot is selected. Here, we're using the last element in the array, and we store its value. Next, 
an index variable i, is initialized to point to the low end of the array. We then loop a further variable j from low to high, in each case checking if aj is below the pivot value. If it is, we swap ai with aj, and increment i by 1. Once the for loop exits, i now takes the place of the new pivot, so we swap the elements of a at i and the pivot, and return i as the new pivot. The complexity of this function is big theta of n, where n is the number of elements in the subarray thanks to the for loop that runs from low to high. We'll see it in action on an example array, which we duplicate for clarity. After calling the function with low set to index 0 and high set to index 5, we assign the pivot to be index 5 and assign its value, which here is 3, to pivot val. Then we initialize i2 low and begin a for loop with j over the elements of the array, up to, but not including, high. We check if aj is less than the pivot value, and find that it isn't, since 8 is greater than 3. So we go to the next value of j. We again check if aj is less than the pivot value, and find that it is, since 1 is less than 3. So we swap ai and aj, increment i, and go to the next value of j. To help us keep track of what's going on, Let's colour the box to the left of i in teal. We'll see that everything to the left of i will end up in the left subarray after partitioning. We check if aj is less than the pivot value, find that it isn't, since 5 isn't less than 3. So we go to the next value of j. We check aj against the pivot value, and since 2 is less than 3, we swap ai and aj, increment i, and go to the next value of j. We check if aj is less than the pivot value, which it isn't since 7 is greater than 3, so our for loop exits and we swap the elements at i and the pivot. Finally, we return i, which becomes the new pivot. Note that everything to the left of the pivot is less than or equal to 3, and everything to the right of the pivot is greater than or equal to 3. We are done. The second partition function we'll look at is based on the original by Tony Hoare. We'll walk through an implementation in the style described by CLRS which is a bit different to the original Hoar function in that it doesn't use randomization, but it does capture the essence of the idea. This time, we select the lowest index as the pivot, then initialize counter variables i and j to start outside the two ends of the array. Now, we enter a while true loop. Here things get a little fruity, since we need to implement a Python version of a repeat until loop. We do this first for i with a while true statement, incrementing i, checking if ai is greater than or equal to the pivot value, then breaking out. We then repeat this construct for j, but this time decrementing j and checking if aj is less than or equal to the pivot value, then breaking out. If we reach a point when i is greater than or equal to j, we return j as the pivot. Otherwise, we swap ai and aj and continue our while loop. To use this particular function, we also need to modify quicksort slightly. When using Lumuto partitioning, we called quicksort with arguments a, low, and pivot minus 1 to do our left subarray recursion. When using Hoare partitioning, we call quicksort with arguments a, low, and pivot to do our left subarray recursion. Both use the same right subarray recursion. The complexity of this partition function is big theta of n, which is the same as the Lomuto partition function. Hoare partitioning is often used in implementation because it requires fewer swaps than the Lomuto partition function. However, it is perilously easy to make a mistake when implementing Hoare partitioning. Algorithms legend Jeff Erickson says that Hoare partitioning is one of the places off by one errors go to die. John Bentley author of Programming Pearls, says that he once spent the better part of two days chasing down a bug hiding in his partitioning loop. Let's see it in action on the same array, which we again duplicate for clarity. We call partition with low as index 0 and high as index 5. Here we pick the low index as our pivot, set i to the left end and j to the right end of the array. Now we enter the outer while loop and the first inner while loop, incrementing i by 1. We compare ai against the pivot value, which is itself, so the condition is true, which takes us to the break and on to the next while loop. From here, we decrement j and check if aj is less than the pivot value. Finding it is, we break and check if i is greater than or equal to j. It isn't, so we swap ai and aj, then we start our loop. 
We go back into the first while loop, which this time increments i all the way up to the end of the array before breaking out when it reaches the value of 8, which is simply the original pivot value. Then we decrement j, see that the condition evaluates to true, and break out of the loop. Now i is greater than j, so we return j as the new pivot. Items in the left subarray are less than the new pivot value, and items in the right subarray are greater. We are done. We now come to the analysis. We mentioned earlier that the worst case behavior of quicksort is quadratic. How is it that things can go badly for quicksort? We've already seen that the partition function, whether Lomuto or Hoare, is big theta of n. Since quicksort is a recursive function, we can describe its total runtime as t of n equals t r minus 1 plus t n minus r plus big theta of n, where r is the rank of the pivot. Here, t of r minus 1 is the cost of calling quicksort on the left subarray, t of n minus r is the cost of calling quicksort on the right subarray, and big theta of n is the cost of running the partition function on the full current subarray under consideration. If we choose the pivot to be the smallest value, so that r equals 1, then our recurrence becomes t of n equals t of 0 plus t of n minus 1 plus big theta of n. Since t of 0 is bigger of 1 because no array comparisons are performed, we get that t of n equals t of n minus 1 plus big theta of n. The solution to this expression, as we'll see shortly, is t of n equals big theta of n squared. In fact, more generally, we have that t of n is big theta of n squared for any fixed value of r that is not dependent on n. To build a bit more intuition and see how the recursion gets solved, we'll illustrate the runtime complexity when the pivot rank is 1. For this, we'll write the partition cost associated with each call, which is big theta of n, as c times n for some constant c, and we'll look at the subarray sizes considered at each level of the recursion and their corresponding cost. When we call quicksort on the initial array, the subarray under consideration for sorting has n elements and the partitioning cost is cn. Then we recurse into the left subarray of 0 elements and the right subarray of n-1 elements. The first exits without calling partition and the second contributes a cost of c times n-1. Then we repeat the recursion on the second subarray, contributing a cost of c times n-2. This continues down until we have a subarray of size 2, which contributes a cost of 2c. The final recursions into subarrays of size 0 and 1 do not call the partition function. The terms on the right are summed together to get the total cost, which takes the form of an arithmetic series. We can write this more simply in terms of n and n plus 1, from which we can see that the cost is indeed quadratic. We'll now consider the case when the partitioning scheme is more balanced. In general, Quicksort is a happy algorithm whenever the rank of the pivot is k times n for some constant k between 0 and 1. And of course, by happy, we mean that its complexity is big O of n log n, for that is what makes sorting algorithms happy. To understand this, let's look at the simplest case when k is 0.5, again considering the subarray sizes and costs associated with recursion. As before, we start with a subarray of size n and a cost of c times n from calling the partition function. Then we recurse into two approximately equally sized subarrays. They would be exactly equal if n is even, except for the fact that the pivot gets excluded, so one subarray will have one less than the other. If n is odd, they will be equal in size. This has a cost of less than or equal to 2 times c times n over 2 which equals cn. We recurse on each of these, this time with a cost of less than or equal to 4 times c times n over 4, which is cn. This continues down to the base of the recursion tree, where every subarray has size 1, and no array comparisons are performed. Since the tree height is log n, and the cost at each level is less than or equal to cn, we have that the total cost is less than or equal to cn log n, and so sorting runs in big O of n log n time. Note that for complexity, what matters is the recursion tree depth. Suppose we have a ludicrously unbalanced partition, in which the rank is k times n, and k is 0.995. This produces subarray splits that look like this, which is drawn to scale where we can see the left subarray occupies most of the width, and you may just be able to make out the right subarray. Clearly, this looks unbalanced. However, 
Our recursion tree depth is log base 1000 over 995 of n. Since that's just a constant factor different from log base 2 of n, we have the somewhat remarkable conclusion that this partitioning still has a complexity of n log n. This finding gives us some non-rigorous intuition for why most partitions will produce big O of n log n behaviour with quicksort. When using the naive implementations we have described so far, both the Lomuto and Hall partition functions will exhibit quadratic complexity on input data that is already sorted, which is not great, given that this can arise frequently in practice. If the array consists fully of duplicates of the same element, Lomuto partitioning will also have quadratic complexity. One simple heuristic, known as the median of three, aims to get a better pivot by picking the median of the first, middle, and last elements in the array. This is useful on sorted input arrays and many other forms of input. However, it has its limits and doesn't rule out worst case behavior in general. We'll briefly also discuss randomized quicksort, a variation of the algorithm we've discussed so far that is very close to Hoare's original proposal, which also used randomization. It works through a simple modification to our existing quicksort. Each time we make a partition, we pick the pivot uniformly at random from the array elements and swap it with the element at index 0 if we're using the Lomoto partition, or with the last element if we're using the Hall partition described earlier. The expected runtime of randomized quicksort is big O of n log n. The proof is somewhat involved, so we won't go through it here but I've added references if you'd like to find out more. Randomization is widely used in practice because the worst case becomes very unlikely to occur. That said, in general, it is hard to fully escape the possibility of quadratic behavior with quicksort. In his so-called killer adversary for quicksort, Douglas McElroy proposed an algorithm that induced quadratic behavior on a range of popular quicksort implementations by cleverly deciding the ordering of elements lazily during sorting in such a way that quicksort has to do a huge amount of work. Nevertheless, we can, if we wish, ensure big O of n log n worst case behavior by using the median of medians algorithm to select the pivot. However, in practice, this leads to an implementation that is very slow, and so it is not widely used at present. In the video description, you can find links to Python code to implement quicksort, slides, and references. I hope you have a wonderful day.